It's Thursday again, tell everybody to lock in Grab some popcorn, a drink, and go and throw your AirPods in It's the one hour show, constantly speaking facts Bulletproof stats are always shooting from Matt And when it comes to Kyle, you getting numbers and style Jake is gonna educate you, he has that knowledge on fire Player, step your game up, don't be sluggish or lazy Or Jimmy J might hit you with a shaky baby Catch him on YouTube or any podcast platform Breaking all the news down like Shaq does the backboards No hot takes, this is where the hottest debate's at Now kick your feet up, cause it's time for Straight Facts What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to Straight Facts, a sports show that educates and entertains, presented by the Up On Game Podcast Network. It's your boy, Jimmy J, with my guys, as always, Jake Galley, Kyle Sirik, and Stat Matt Robinson. I guess I guess I shouldn't say always. I guess that's a little, like... Recently. It's a little misleading. Always in spirit. We've been full and squatted always recently. I like, I like that, always in spirit. We've actually been pretty good full squatted up lately. I, I like that. I mean, we have our best episodes when we're, when we're full squatted up. And also, up, it's man. like everyone, like, behind the scenes, like... You know, we all have a hand in getting this show put together. So, like, even if someone's not going to be here, it's not like we're not here, here. Right, so right. But, when we're, I mean, and today is the today is the hallmark of that, peeling back the curtain a little bit. We, we needed all hands on deck to have to get this show underway. But as we do, we're here, and we're, we're here to provide the facts for y'all because there's a discussion that's popping off in the NBA that I, I think needs our expertise, fellas. It needs us. It needs all our opinions, our basketball minds, our facts to go into it. And that's the NBA MVP discussion. Um, because Jake is ready to blow the lid off this thing. I'm going to, I've actually, I'm trying to like prepare myself not to yell because I will quickly get upset about this. Well, 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 we're going to get into that MVP discussion right now um, because we really need to put our, our stamp on it. The NBA regular season concludes in less than two weeks. April 10th is the last game. As of yesterday, March 29th, an NBA media poll projected Jokic over Joel Embiid for the NBA MVP right now. Jokic is 26.3 points per game, 13 rebounds on 50, 57% from the field, 34% from three. Embiid, 30 points per game, 11 rebounds, 49% from the field, 36% from three you got to look way past the numbers when you're talking about these two for mvp but that's it's it's a it's a one-two race right now right for Jokic and Embiid for mvp so i'm gonna start over there <laughs> we're gonna build up to jake i'm gonna start over there because matt put, give, give me your give me your opening statement for who you believe mvp is this mvp is a two-man race okay between joel Embiid and not nikola Jokic, but Giannis antetokounmpo wow Nikola Jokic, he's he he's he's be happy with the bronze medal and the stat mat MVP rankings. Mm-hmm. He's a very good player. He gets all the nerd awards for all the stats that he <laughs> leads in. But I don't I think people forget that Giannis last year was like ineligible from the MVP race because of his playoff failures before last year. Because he was a two time MVP. His stats didn't get any worse last year. Mm-hmm. He was back to back MVP. They flamed out in the playoffs. He got, okay, stood aside. He wins finals MVP. He is the best player in basketball. This year, he's he's 10-1 to 1 to win MVP, which I think is a sham. He's my MVP. Hmm. I love Joel Embiid. He's my favorite Philadelphia athlete of my adult life, and it's not close. Right. But Giannis has the same points per game as him, more rebounds per game, more assists, more efficient, is just as good defensively. And he's gotten better at every step of the game. Right. He's shooting forty two point one percent from mid range, which is like Lee, which is like really, really good. That's- I, re- I really hate to cut off this this stat Matt rant because he's really leading you guys into like our, our next segment. That's better Beauty- than Tatum's mid range, beautifully right. leading us into into our next segment. So I'm I'm putting a pin into what you're saying, stat Matt. And I, I just wanted to, I needed to get you it needed out to get it out. It was it was boiling to the surface. I don't. We're, we're gonna stick with. And be Jokic for right now. There's a spot for exactly where that Giannis Antetokounmpo rant can and will come into. But let's stick with Jokic and Embiid right now. So, Kyle, give me your opening statement. If you had to choose one of these guys for your MVP, give me your opening statement. <laughs> you're, you're framing it like we're in court. <laughs> uh, yeah, I like. I love uh, counselors. Yeah, opening I mean, statement. this is what I say. Nikola Jokic got it last year off stats, right? I think the team could, or the league probably, and fans – we're in agreement that it was probably Embiid's award before he got injured. So Jokic was. was up the same stats. Cool. It wasn't a dominant MVP season he had last year. He was given the award. He probably deserved it. Mm. 
Well, now your team's taking a step back. You've been a three seed year after year after year. You're a six seed. I don't really care about the stats anymore, right? You look at the games where Nikola Jokic has the most assists and the Nuggets lose. So that's cool that he can pass, right? That, that's great. But I want guys that can win basketball games and a six seed MVP, especially to give him a back to back when his team got worse from the season before, doesn't really make sense to me. Now, last night, and I know you don't want me to bring up Giannis again. Giannis made a case over Embiid and to really solidify right, right, this right. MVP. Embiid really had to come out and play hard last night. He played well. He had a good game. Mm-hmm. But when Giannis gives you 40 in the Wells Fargo Center. And, and, and the game and the game and clinching takes play. The game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tough. How about Mr. Harden doesn't brick another three Hold off up. of no. off, off I'm the defending. I'm, I'm, def- I'm, defending I'm defending that Harden. Harden was great last night. I'm yeah. defending that well, Harden too. The only thing about that is the one before Embiid took a terrible shot with 40 shot. seconds left mm-hmm. in the game, 14 seconds on the shot clock. But that's like terrible. That's like you don't get into your action. Like I like they complete like when you have Joel Embiid and James Harden on the strong side, and I don't want to get too much into last night's game because this is more of an overarching segment, but like I'm watching that game. And in no scenario ever can you have Joel Embiid and James Harden on the strong side with three defenders looking at them and not come up with an action to get someone a backdoor, a flare look coming off a screen where you're getting a wide open look because of the attention of your stars. I don't want to go too deep into this. I'm not because this is the only statement I'm going to make yeah, regarding that. The only I'm going to tie it up with saying this. Don't. Don't clamor for James Harden and then get mad when James Harden does James Harden. But does. James Harden. This is for a different time. I think this is put, so for this. It, it, stamping it. James so Harden close. played his best game in Philly last he night. He played great. Like getting back to it. Embiid should be the favorite to win MVP right now. This is an issue I have. Again, James mentioned that media poll now projects Jokic over Embiid. Well, the last media poll, which was three weeks ago or so, had Embiid over Jokic. And all that's happened is Embiid playing better than Jokic. Mm. And Embiid's team playing better when he's on the court than Jokic's team plays when Jokic is on the court for the Nuggets. And when Jokic comes off the court, the Nuggets kind of play better with him off. Now, small sample size. When B comes off the court, Giannis gives you 15 and two minutes on Paul Millsap and wins the game like he did last night. Mm-hmm. So I, it's shout out so to hard. Hanlon for doing some great A propaganda for his guy. Drew. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, I was I was seeing that today, and hey, it, it does. That's that that bodes well for you as well as a shooting coach too. If, if my number one client wins MVP, it like, doesn't yeah. make sense how Jokic passed and beat in the last vote. That makes no sense. And to me. it's double speak because it's the same national media who says James Harden's wash doesn't try overrated, blah blah blah, but then says, "Oh, we have to put Jokic ahead of Embiid because Embiid got Harden." Yeah, so it's just this. To to aid to Kyle's point too, the Nuggets with Jokic are plus two point five on the court. The Nuggets without Jokic are plus five point nine net differential of minus three point four. The Sixers with Embiid on the court plus six point nine. Sixers without Embiid. Only plus 0.8. And it feels right to just mention that since the last vote. Right, right. right. That was since the last vote happened. But that is completely on display. Once again, last night, Sixers come into the fourth quarter with a double-digit lead, and that's salted away with Embiid on the bench, which I emoji, he was sending some shots at Doc after the game saying, I need to be on the court. Top 15 coach of all time. Hey, man, it's top 15. Can't tell Doc (laughs) that. But I I just want to say, like, I think we have gone past the point of logic and reason ruling Mm-hmm. kind of who should get these awards like it's it is so much predicated nowadays and we were talking about this before the cameras were on like so much predicated on how many social clips are you, are you churning out how many behind the back passes like that stuff actually does have a tangible impact on the award in my opinion at least in public perception mm-hmm. and ultimately like that like that stuff doesn't matter it just doesn't like people throw all these stats i was getting into arguments with nuggets fans TPA does not matter to me. I don't care how good Nikola Jokic is in it. If his team is the sixth seed, right, right. there's five other teams better than Nikola Jokic's team. He's not the most valuable player. He's not. He can't do it on the defensive end. I, we can get into the exact numbers of why I say that. But the ultimate thing that comes down to it, and, and get, going back to what I first said, we are devoid of logic and reason. When you, as a Nuggets fan, look at me and say Joel Embiid, is equivalent to Nikola Jokic on the defensive end, or I'm over here trying to knock Nikola Jokic for whatever. It just doesn't make sense. People look goofy. Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Personally, me personally, I think it's Joel Embiid's award because he does it on both ends. And because, like Kyle said, logic transfers from last year, it was his award. Why wouldn't it be? It's the unfair. I don't mean to keep. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. You're not going to. It's the unfair um, ex- exposure that Embiid gets that Jokic doesn't get that leads people to nitpick Embiid over Jokic. 
because nobody watches Nuggets games. They have the lowest cable rating of any team. A lot of it's because of like BS contract TV deals mm. where they can't watch it because it's blacked out. So all these NBA writers who don't watch a lot of Jokic just look at the stats and say, oh, wow, look at that. While they watch a lot of the national TV Sixers games and point out every flaw when they're not watching Jokic's flaws because mm. people don't watch the Nuggets. Yeah, Jokic puts up 40, 10, and 10 in a battle to the death with the Oklahoma City Thunder. And they look <laughs> at the box score and say, man, he had a great game. Maybe he should stop Isaiah Roby from scoring 20. Maybe that's the issue. Like, I, this is what it's- the MVP, I mean, the MVP discussion, should, it should get you this hot. It really it really should get you this hot because it, it's, t- it's saying – who has been the pound for pound best player in the NBA this season for the entire year? And just, but we are straight facts. We, we, you know, we, we live and, and die and die by the number. I guess we won't say we live and die by the numbers because we are able to peel away from them in times like this, where I can absolutely look at the game of basketball. And it, Matt, to your point, I can even look at highlights and, and, and game summaries of the game of basketball and see that Joel Embiid has been the best player and, and at times the best team in the Eastern Conference this season. I, I just don't understand why there's, there's such a desire to give the award to someone who has not been a better player than you know, this year. You know funny about the voting too? Um, a lot of this comes from like NBA, like beat writers, the media, right? Love narratives. The best narrative this year has been, for a case for MVP, has been the anti-narrative. They wanted to push all this Philly stuff. Ben Simmons, how's he going to break up the team? Joel Embiid goes city to city. Doesn't matter what city he's at. First question he gets in the post game, what's up? Something about Ben Simmons, right? How about we just act like it doesn't matter? How about we come in, we win basketball games? How about we hold the one seed for a couple of weeks? How about when we drop, we're like the two or three seed? Mm-hmm. Come in, beat guys. It doesn't matter. The Sixers came in, forgot about the Ben Simmons thing, and that was off of the mentality of Joel Embiid. And he's playing at the highest level of his career, and I think the highest level of the league right now. Now, okay, let me play devil's advocate to three Sixers fans for a little bit, a tiny bit. You know, let's let's he look at the other side. Of, look look at the other side of the coin. Jokic does have the Nuggets only in the sixth seed. He has dealt with no Jamal Murray all season. He's dealt with an injury to uh, Michael Porter Jr. as well. He's dealt to some adversity on his team, and I would I would argue his top two running mates on his team have gone down. And to most teams, that slides you out of the playoff scenario. He's kept them not only in the play in, but above that into a playoff scenario to where, you know, don't don't just try to walk past the Nuggets in the first round. The reigning MVP is on their team. And they might beat you. Does, does, does he get credit at all for that? Because if it was a LeBron James who had his team into the sixth seed with all these injuries and all this adversity, if it was other players, you'd want to give them the MVP, right? So does does he get some credit for that? I, I mean yeah. – Bronze he medal. has to. But I also think MB gets, bronze. gets the bronze medal. I also think MB gets credit for the team that he brought to a higher point. As far as Jokic goes, like you do have to give him his props because he is everything for them. Like you're like you're saying, without him, I mean, obviously without their top three players, they're like a lottery team. But right. even if you were to take him out and sub Jamal Murray in, I, I have a hard time imagining that they're making the play in tournament in the West. So Yes, he is an MVP. I mean, he's, he deserved the MVP last year once Embiid went out. Yep. And he is deserves a ton of praise this year for the offensive numbers that he has put up. But it, it, it is a zero-sum game. And I don't think, personally, that anyone who is below average in terms of points per play allowed when you look at isolation, guarding isolations, when you look at guarding post-ups, when you look at guarding the pick-and-roll roll man, Jokic is below average, below 50% in terms of percentile points per points allowed per possession when they run those and, and actions. I, I, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. You're looking at all like, center statistics right there, all, all statistics yes. that, like, the best of your position. Yes. In a, in a positionless basketball world, you, you're, you're, I can see why people are bringing other stats that aren't center stats into that conversation and saying, yeah, he's not as good as Embiid here, but he's better than Embiid in X, Y, and Z that aren't center statistics. Assists. How, how good you are in a pace of play. How would you like all those, all those things that like the center is never responsible for that, but that's padded in, in Jokic's argument because of this positionless basketball, because I see a center bringing up the ball now. I, I just worry that defense means far, far too little compared to how much it actually impacts winning play. Like what happened with the Boston Celtics? They tightened up the defensive end and they're the number one seed in the Eastern conference like that second mm-hmm. half of the year. So like, I, I just think that to be an MVP Especially, and, and last year it was cool because there was no heir apparent. There was no number two that was right on his neck. Now when there's two guys who are dead even, like I don't see how this is any different than when Russell Westbrook was getting his triple doubles, 
the Thunder were a six seed, they were a lower seed, and then they decided after giving him an MVP, hey, we're going to give it to James Harden because he's doing similar stuff and his team's a little better. The same situation as this one. I can see that, actually. I can see that. That's why we, that's and why then, I called and, Serbian and, 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 and they were, they're, <laughs> That's why, that's who he is. Serbian and they, and they were a little too far. The, no they, we they, know they, now right, they rewarded <laughs> Russ for a historic season, even though your team is 16. Hey, you gotta, so, last year, they rewarded Jokic for a historic season, even though your team's not number one or number two in the West, just to reward you for a historic season. But this year, I need to reward, you know, the winning team. Okay. So it, it sounds like that. We're not on board with Jokic winning MVP if, if, if he were to win MVP. I, like, I do think the race is really close, right? It like, should be. Both yeah. have fair cases. But I just can't see, and it was just, it's just because it's so recent as yesterday, and it pissed me off. <laughs> I don't understand how the newest media poll points to Nikola Jokic, and he is now the favorite to win MVP. Well, I would just say I don't understand how that happens. I got, I got some. That's I got some spicy conspiracy theories. Go ahead, say, take okay. it away, take it away. Take so it away. Adam Silver hates the Sixers because of the process. Known, and the Maury comment about uh, Hong Kong got a lot of people mad. Ty Lue even made a comment about it, and a recent thing last time, uh, Daryl Maury tweeted he lost the NBA two billion dollars. And when was this? This was before last year. The Hong Kong thing was before his last year in Houston. Right. Yeah. So right. now, now they got the the Sixers who they hate the process, and then Daryl Morey, who they got really upset at because of the China stuff, and, and and maybe Adam Silver's like, hey, you'll get a little more access if we don't uh, put Embiid as MVP. Nah, I don't know if that's spicy. We're, we're that down. We're down the rabbit hole. That's we're that's down. That's 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 and, and, here's, and here's the thing. So how long are you going to punish the Sixers for this? Then they're, they're just never going to get MVP Turn. ever again. Yeah, it's just an eternal punishment. Just, it's it's entertaining to me. Yeah, <laughs> I, your sense making. You I get it. Your sense making. I'm not sense-making. saying it's true. You, I'm just putting it out there. You've brought up some good ones in the past. I'm not getting on board with that one. I, I would just prepare, if you are a 76ers fan listening to this podcast, prepare for Nikola Jokic to be back-to-back MVP. Yep. Because the straw polls made up comprised of 70% of the actual NBA MVP voters. And in that poll, I don't know the exact numbers. I don't have them up in front of me. I think it was like 20-some votes for Embiid, 60-some for Jokic. That is like nowhere near a 50-50 coin flip, kind of like we're depicting it. That is like Nikola Jokic more times than not. Is, is you know you run this and, and let's get a new board. And if you're six fan, let's use that energy. If it does happen, feel- we got a playoff run to make, boys. Let's he, he use that keep energy. His award. He's got bigger fish MB- to fry in the Western Conference. What I will say actually is if Embiid doesn't win the MVP, you think that, that ignites playoff, him? You think that ignites him for a playoff run? Oh my God, yeah. Throw you know, him. you know how he takes that. Yeah, that as he should. As he's he the should. guy that that lights under. His as butt. he should. But they won't. They don't announce it till late now. No, they, they do it in the first round. And now in, in June, I thought they'd do the award show. They do like the, the whole MVP. No, awards. I remember last year, and maybe this is a one time thing, they were doing it in the first round in the locker room before games. Yeah, that's right. Jokic got, his, Jokic got it in the oh, locker room. He, he got it. the yeah. most anticlimactic it was, it was MVP. LaMelo yeah. Ball got his rookie of the year. It was, but I do think it was, I think that was like a weird year. I think that was, was that a weird Stat on it. I'd see him typing okay. over there. Stat Matt's on it. Um, yeah, I would say, and, and this is for some NBA YouTube heads, anyone's going down the, the rabbit hole of highlights. Uh, and Bede takes after Hakeem Olajuwon. And something similar happened to Hakeem Olajuwon where David Robinson was given the NBA uh, MVP. The they go out to play, and, and they hand Robinson before the game the award. And Hakeem turns to, I think it may have been Kenny Smith, and said, that's my award. I'm going to go show him tonight. And went and, like, dominated. That's where the highlight from him shaking Robinson out of his shoes comes from. Dominated, mm-hmm. dominated the Spurs in that series. So I could say, hey, man. I could see the same thing happening this year with the Sixers. Matt, but. Matt found it. <laughs> well, what is so it? So they're not – the reason it happened last year where they were giving them out in playoff series is because the league got pushed back last year. Right, The right, season right. started in, like, December. Right. And, like, this Matt, the, what July. Matt just had, no yeah. exception, it gets given out in June. Well, June last year happened to be when, like, the first, second round of the right, playoffs right, right. was. So. so this this year will be given away. Okay, well, we're going to move on for the, for the sake of time. So- 